So how do you create a visually enticing mural mock-up of your design for a mural proposal you have to do? Let's get to it. So I'm gonna use this current proposal as the sample that I'm gonna work on. So the mock-up that I have to do is a design basically that will be on this parking garage structure and in the middle section, those three long pieces, and then at the bottom, that really long piece, I'm gonna be sort of creating a design that will live on that substrate. So basically creating a mock-up to show the committee my idea and they gave me a blueprint. Usually I would work from a picture, but the blueprint is super flat, so I'm gonna use that blueprint for right now. So I throw that in Procreate, and I make a new layer, and that will serve as the alpha layer that basically I'll create the boundaries of my design so I can sort of draw anywhere and everywhere and it stays in that boundary. So uh, pick a pen tool and a color that stands out and basically I'm just going to try to create the shape of the surface that I can paint on. So I'm gonna try to create the surface for those three ledges at the top. And the main thing is making sure that you get uh, all those lines connected or else when you try to fill it, it fills everything. Like, you know, I'm about to do here. But you just make sure it's all connected and then fill it in. And then once you have everything filled in, that is when you want to turn that layer into an alpha layer. And an alpha layer is basically allows you to paint on everything that is sort of a part of that layer. So because we have all of those different um, shapes on that layer, clicking that alpha layer like I did now, now allows us to make another layer on top. So we can make another layer that allows us to basically draw on that clipping mask layer. And the only thing that is visible on that clipping mask layer is sort of like what was in the space of that alpha layer below. So that allows us to basically freely draw pretty much anything we want to, everywhere we want to, but the only thing that is visible would be everything that would be in those boundaries that we created on that alpha layer. And that is basically how I'm able to go around and just basically paint freely. And you can even include photos into it. So here's a good photo of me looking all stoic and stuff. So like I can just throw that in there. And that's usually how I try to see if a face or a figure or an object uh, goes well with, an, with a wall that has sort of an obstruction on there. So this is the actual design that I'm submitting. So super abstract, but you can see the many layers that I have. And all you have to do is turn down or turn off that back layer that's at the bottom and it leaves a transparent layer of your design on top. And you can do the next step in Procreate. I just do mine in Photoshop, mainly because I simultaneously work on the proposal at the same time, so it's just easier for me. So now what I'm gonna do is actually get some real photos of the actual space and use the mock-up that I created and throw that mock-up on those real photos. So one of the best tools is Google Earth or Google Maps. That way you're able to go inside any place and actually take different angles without having to be there. So basically I'm taking different angles of the parking garage just by going on Google Maps and just doing a screenshot. So that is a great way of just working more efficiently. And you know, sometimes you don't have access to a space. So this is just easier for me to actually just go on Google Earth and get those snapshots really quick. So I get those snapshots, I throw that into my Photoshop and I take that PNG image, which is transparent. I throw that on a layer on top of that and then turn it into a raster image. So you wanna make sure you do that. Once it's a raster image, you can use that selection tool or the lasso tool to select a section of it that you want to move around. So I selected this top ledge area and all I'm doing is hitting Command T to do the transform and then the command again so I can take those different points and move them around. But one of the things that I did earlier when I put it in there is turn down the opacity. That way when I move the different points around, I'm able to see exactly where they're going 
on the image below. So that is basically how I'm trying to make sure that it's, you know, fairly accurate. Um, you don't have to be super accurate because it is a mock-up. You just want to be uh, accurate as you can be. So turn down that, that opacity so that you can see through it. And then using that transform and the, uh, I believe it's the command tool, uh, our key on Mac, I'm not too sure what it is on PC, but you do that, you're able to move those different points around. And all I'm doing is going, you know, through the different layers. Uh, I did the first three, so now I'm doing the bottom layer. And I'm just moving those different points around. And you can cut up the section as well if you need to and do the best you can to sort of fit it within those different areas. And your wall is going to be different. Maybe you have to block out uh, a window or a different structure just to make sure that it fits and it looks like it's a part of the wall. So do the best you can. So like even this area right here is uh, a little awkward. I, I, I thought it was larger than what I thought, so now I'm just trying to size it down. And one of the reasons why I was working from a blueprint and why I like blueprints and super flat images of the space I want to paint on is because when it's super flat, you're more uh, able to use this technique on other photos uh, and different angles of the building because if I'm working from a photo that's already at an angle, it's more difficult to apply that design uh, from the start and then later translate it on another photo that has a really harsh angle. So that's why I like to work from a blueprint first. But, you know, once you're done, then it's basically, you know, trying to figure out, you know, a blend that would work on your wall to sort of show some of the texture, but also show uh, the brightness of your design so I like this hard light blend mode that's on there so I use that and I duplicate it just so I can have a little bit more control over that layer but that's basically it and like I said like after you finish with one you can do another angle with that same design on the same building or structure just to give a different perspective of how it's going to look. So basically, I'm just gonna do the same thing uh, and just throw that same design on different angles of that building so that when I'm putting that into the presentation, it doesn't feel like I'm sharing that same photo. It feels like there's different photos and it makes it more real for the individuals looking at that proposal, whether it just be a committee of people or it's a building owner or it's a business owner you have to give it to. So regardless of you know the amount of people, you just wanna make sure that it looks real and getting different angles really sometimes helps out to make it feel like it's actually already on that building because you can see it from different angles. And hopefully, you know, maybe if you know a little bit of video or a little bit of uh, 3D modeling, that would help out as well. But anything you can do to make it feel more real, do it. And this is something that I have done a long time with my Photoshop and Procreate to do these mock-ups with this 2D element and make it feel as real as possible. After that is done, usually I can just automatically throw that into the presentation that you know I'm also working on at the same time. So it's like I'm just actually making the mock-ups, creating the images, and throwing them in the presentation as I'm actually writing the presentation. So I usually have a template presentation uh, from previous presentations and proposals. So I'm just using it, throwing it in uh, that, and changing things up as I go along. But that is how I do my mock-ups for a lot of my presentations and proposals. So hopefully that helped out when it comes to trying to figure out how to put together a realistic mural mock-up for a proposal you have to submit or share with a building owner or an open artist call so that you can sort of show the committee or whoever is looking at that proposal exactly what your vision is. So hopefully this video helped out and like, subscribe, hit that bell notification and I'll see you next time. Peace.